Yes, indeed, and a very good afternoon. Welcome to the Touchline on Y254. I'm Bernardo Kumu, and I'll be here for the next two hours taking up, talking and taking you through what has happened in the world of uh, sports and a lot we have in our tray today, uh, this lovely afternoon. Of course, not forgetting that uh, the, the, there is uh, the Africa Cup of Nations ongoing. Of course, round of 16 kicking off today, and we'll be telling you how Namibia will be meeting Angola and also uh, fancying the chances uh, between uh, two Swan rivals, that's Nigeria and Cameroon. Of course, the two matches will be live on KBC Channel 1 from uh, evening, that's at 8 p.m., and also uh, Cameroon Nigeria will be at 8 p.m., and will be preceded by the uh, Namibia against Angola. All that and much more, of course, in our segment later, we'll be discussing in depth about how the teams, how the 16 teams uh, did make it and what were the surprises as well as uh, some of uh, uh, the casualties of uh, the, that particular tournament, the AFCON. Locally, there is uh, the ongoing AK third meeting at uh, the Nya National Stadium. Of course, Athletics Kenya uh, putting in top gear all the preparations, uh, being an Olympic here, making sure that the athletes are ready and informed ahead of the selection and trials uh, for the 2024 Paris Games. And not forgetting uh, the opening round of the 13 leg WRC World Rally Championship which is happening in Monte Carlo. Of course the third leg will be here in Kenya. That's the Safari Rally later on in March. That and much more including the interviews. A very good afternoon. Welcome to the Touchline. Of course on set I have Barry Sila. As usual, Barry is the sports writer from uh, the People Daily. And he's also here to give the, his insights into this particular conversation that we'll be having today. And our guest today is a Kenpo Karate coach. That's Alex Onyango from Ama Studios in Ongatarongai. Karibuni sana, gentlemen, Thanks on set today. Yes, and uh, Alex, I think you are the guest. Uh, Barry, uh, you are regular here. Mm. I've seen you a couple of times, yeah? But it's the first time that uh, we're <laughs> meeting on this particular platform mm. by a very good friend as well in this particular industry of uh, sports writing and journalism. But uh, Alex, maybe you could begin by telling us how did you find, how did you come up with AMA Studios and what's basically Kenpo Karate in <coughs> Kenya? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kumo. Um, AMA Studio did not just pop into my uh, brain, but uh, this came as a result of challenges in Kenpo, Kenpo Karate. And uh, I wanted uh, something more. I wanted uh, uh, to take Kenpo to the, to the next level. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's what, about, um, your background yourself, what, what motivated to, to pick on Kenpo Karate? You had uh, maybe carried the national flag in, in previous championships, and so you saw it fit to now give back to that or share the knowledge that you have. Yes. Uh, uh, actually, I did not uh, start my martial art uh, journey as a Kenpo, at a, as a Kenpoist. Mm -hmm. uh, I started my journey as a Taekwondo, a Taekwondo student. Mm -hmm. uh, later on, I joined Shotokan as uh, the art that was found uh, where I was going to school. Mm -hmm. uh, but later on, uh, you know, when I, I came to the city, that is Nairobi City, I was staying in Langata, uh, I went to inquire if there is an art anywhere around. Mm -hmm. Then I was told, ah, we have art here, but uh, it's new. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's called Kenpo. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard about Kenpo? Then I say, it's not uh, one of the arts that I know mm -hmm. because during those time, uh, the only known arts were Shotokan and Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. I say because I love martial art, then why not give it a try? That is how I started my uh, uh, Kenpo, Kenpo journey. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, and what are the, uh, some of the basic characteristics of uh, Kenpo Karate? Uh, Kenpo Karate is uh, divided into three, three major uh, divisions. And uh, one is the basic part of it, the self-defense and the freestyle. Uh, this is different from uh, the other art that I used to, I used to train in because uh, freestyle, uh, you know, uh, entertains and fascinates uh, at, some time, at some point, mm -hmm. uh, knowing how to handle things, knowing how to, rem uh, to move with the techniques in, you know, a rapid fire succession. 
you can move the techniques in that speed and uh, at the same time you ensure that the principles of either the clock system or the principles of motion mm -hmm. uh, you know to ensure that economy of either energy mm -hmm. or economy of the strikes that you are using yet you still deliver to you are you know to a hundred percent yes yes and what what has uh, just like um many of the martial arts you know uh, they have like um uh, philosophical or spiritual findings, you know, but what, what does uh, Kenpo uh, preach and how do you pass that over to those, the, the trainees? Kenpo is like uh, any other martial art and uh, as uh, I will say, martial art is always about, you know, the mind, the body and the soul. So one Kenpo can, uh, you know, give you the meditation part of it. Uh, Kenpo can give you the entertainment part of it and uh, the, be the, the, the most unique thing about Kenpo is the discipline aspect. Discipline in terms of how well can you articulate your technique, how well can the technique that you've, uh, you've, uh, you've learned, you can uh, use them for good and how well can you display them on the, um, on the platform when given a chance. Mm -hmm. uh, on that same issue, the discipline issue, Kenpo is one of the art that uh, you can blend whether you go to play this different art or the other different art. Mm -hmm. You can still, uh, you know, play by the rules and still win within their rules. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And now at, um, at AMA Studios, uh, have you gotten a chance to represent the country uh, get players out there and expose them to international championships and how has it been you can talk about maybe 2023 uh, 2023 was one of the you know wonderful years because um, uh, since AMA studio was uh, you know founded that was way back in 2016 uh, we've done a lot of uh, you know national national uh, competition inter-county with other Kenpo Federation, with other Kenpo practitioners in different, uh, you know, counties, cities. Uh, the last was uh, in the same Nakuru July mm, 2023, where my team, I'm a studio team, uh, uh, was number one. Mm -hmm. And uh, we felt that now it's time we try. We try if these kids, uh, you know, they are better the way we've seen them better can we try them internationally so that we be sure that whatever that we are passing on to them works not only within our can can country but also outside mm -hmm. uh, we got a chance to go and play in uh, south africa that's cape town mm -hmm. where we met several teams uh, malawi uh, mozambique uh, zimbabwe there were some others from uh, senegal and South Africa itself. Uh, I went with a team of uh, nine players and uh, we managed to scoop 25 medals and two trophies. Mm -hmm. So through that, uh, I believe that uh, whatever we are passing on to uh, you know, practitioners in Kenya here as Kenpoist is something worth uh, an international uh, recognition. Mm -hmm. yes. how, how crucial was your performance in South Africa? How do you build it this year now? Uh, this year uh, we were thinking uh, if possible we also welcome them because you know you don't always love being a visitor somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Sometimes also you have to welcome them back to to feel how it's uh, you know how it feels uh, to to have visitors mm -hmm. uh, you know at home because uh, when we went there, the hostility there was uh, was something that uh, I've never I've never experienced. Mm -hmm. They were so good to us, and uh, they were taking us around. Mm -hmm. Anything the kids because I was having kids from uh, five years old to uh, the oldest was around for fourteen years old, mm -hmm. and. Uh, the kind of hospitality that they gave us, we felt like we are a family. Mm -hmm. uh, during the times that uh, we were not, uh, you know, engaged in uh, martial art, because you can't play martial art from morning to evening, uh, we'll find ourselves, uh, you know, they teach kids on how to make uh, some, uh, some, uh, I call them mayonnaise, mm -hmm. 
mayonnaise, uh, some some of the uh, veggies uh -huh. that you eat with uh, either um, French fries uh -huh. or uh, so for them uh -huh. martial art is not just uh, you know kicking and punching it also carries the discipline of you know kids knowing how to conduct things in the house uh -huh. you know you don't eat on a plate then you leave it there for maybe you know house manager to come and pick it uh -huh. this kid must have a responsible i can go you know get my food prepare it eat it then take it wash my dish uh -huh. so for me it was one of the platform that i was not only learning the art itself mm -hmm. When we were there, one thing also I came to realize that they don't, uh, you know, they don't separate arts. They are back in South Africa. Mm -hmm. We were competing with uh, the Kenpo. Mm -hmm. We are competing with Shotokan. Mm -hmm. We are competing with uh, Mantis, mm -hmm. the praying Mantis. Mm -hmm. We are competing with uh, um, Taekwondo mm -hmm. and uh, Guju and many other arts. So for them, they have a, a unison platform where mm -hmm. they agree on the rules, mm -hmm. uh, the ground rules, because sometimes uh, the traditional martial art have their, you know, their rules that sometimes the, it's not favoring Kenpo or Kenpo have rules which are not favoring mm -hmm. uh, other arts. Mm -hmm. So for mm -hmm. them, they are one step ahead of us by, you know, unifying the rules, unifying the rules mm -hmm. where each and every practitioner mm -hmm. is given a platform mm -hmm. without, you know, without uh, being uh, 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 separated or segregated that, you know, you belong to this art mm -hmm. and we belong to this art, mm -hmm. so we cannot mingle and play together. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yes, and maybe Barry will come in mm -hmm. after you answer this one. Um, I mean, you talk about how Ken Poe, Mantis and all other arts are, you know, they are not separated. Mm -hmm. Would you think that this can be replicated back here? And, uh, you know, uh, every journey starts with a, a step mm -hmm. and uh, where there is a belief, mm -hmm. there is always a way. Mm -hmm. And I believe the like-minded coaches who are open, you know, martial artists are about an open, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a half cup. You learn every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether you are a black belt, mm -hmm. you are a grandmaster, mm -hmm. you, all, you must always create a room. Mm -hmm. That simple free space where you can learn mm -hmm. from others, whether they are just, uh, you know, a first degree mm -hmm. or, you know, they are in their first done mm -hmm. in black belt. Mm -hmm. They have something unique that might change whatever that you've worked for maybe for 30 or 20 years mm -hmm. that, you know, put you in a platform where everyone can see. So for me, I believe the like-minded coaches who feel that they are a half cup band, they need, mm, they need more. This is the same thing they can also, uh, you know, replicate to their students mm -hmm. and eventually, uh, you know, to the whole nation. Mm -hmm. Ibarri? Uh, <coughs> Coach, maybe in the, the scene in Kenya, how would you rate it? Because n the way you're saying, it's like the southern nations are more advanced. I believe they have more tournaments, they have more coaching um, uh, and infrastructure. But uh, the challenges, especially with, with sup financial support, how, how big of an impact is it in Kenya? Uh, one thing I will uh, stress on is in Kenya, there is what we call my way is the way. Mm. My art is the art. And uh, if all the coaches can get that stigma out of their head and they become also students at the same time they are coaches quote in quote but anytime something is more superior than what you have you'll want to understand it because i will not talk about uh, either uh, taekwondo shotokan or kenpo if i don't have the in-depth of the specific art mm -hmm. that will be you know malicious right mm -hmm. so in terms of finances we are not at upper hand like them because they'll charge their class at maybe 7,000. Mm. As we charge maybe class as low as, I don't know how much, depending on the location of, location of uh, uh, where you've located your club. And uh, I will say every little coin that comes into you, 
you don't base it on what you are giving out to the student. Mm -hmm. If I decided to be a coach, I have to give it 101% because that is what I, I love doing. Mm -hmm. And unless you are in that profession by default, mm -hmm. I want to train people and get some few coins because eventually training, is, training people is not easy. Mm -hmm. You will get, uh, you know, tired, mm -hmm. especially when those coins are not coming to you. Mm -hmm. But you see the numbers in class. Yeah. So when I talk about finances, sometimes I don't want to get into, but with a little support and little recognition of um, either the government, mm. the clients understanding that these coaches also need also the money to pro propel their life, mm. those two things can help. Mm. You know, the government will, uh, will come into your aid when now, uh, let me say, uh, you, you've been uh, invited to a, maybe a national championship, international, mm -hmm. and uh, you guys have tried your best. We, we cannot go there, depend on the expenses. Maybe you are invited in the U.S. where visas issues and all that. Now, mm -hmm. this is where the government, I believe, from my point of view, mm -hmm. this is where the government uh, should chip in and, uh, you know, help uh, facilitate such. Mm -hmm. yes. And in terms of, sorry, in terms of federation, are they helping much? In terms of federation, now, uh, that one I'll not get into it because uh, I'll, be, I'll be not, uh, uh, you know, out on the politics of uh, martial art. Okay. Because I've said the like-minded. You mm. get into the politics of everything, sometimes mm. you don't develop it. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, from, from the... Uh, the discussion is it an oxymoron for 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 <laughs> for, <laughs> for Kenpo to come together, yeah. you know, for everything to for the, all the arts to to, to, to come together to form one body and go forward as as, as a team. Is it uh, an oxymoron? I'll be very honest from my point of view, mm -hmm. because the division of arts there has to be something that triggered it out, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you can come into a common thing maybe, we do events together where we have rules that we've agreed on mm. that these rules uh, will, uh, you know, cut across either mm. is a Shotokan as a art, uh, Taekwondo as a art, mm -hmm. Guju, mm -hmm. uh, Kenpo, mm -hmm. and uh, when you have uh, those rules, then you can play, you can do events together. Mm -hmm. But once the division is there, mm -hmm. everyone mm -hmm. has, you know, pave their path, they pave their way. Mm -hmm. And at times, you don't share what we call the syllabus. Mm -hmm. And when we don't share the syllabus, like different schools, yet, uh, like, let me just say class eight, mm -hmm. at times there is a national exam that cut across. Mm -hmm. yes. Whichever way you are, your coach was teaching you, your teacher was teaching you, but now what uh, prove that mm -hmm. who is better than the other mm -hmm. or which school perform better than the other is now when we have a national event with rules that, you know, cut across all arts. Mm -hmm. And what's the future of Kenpo? Uh, Ken in po Kenya, yes. Kenpo started in Kenya way back in 1997. That which was much later after other arts, the two major arts uh, were in play. And uh, like any other business, mm -hmm. getting Kenpo to be understood was only uh, possible in the cities mm -hmm. because Kenpo started in the heart, uh, the capital city of Kenya that is in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. uh, God rest his soul, uh, Grandmaster uh, Ahmed Kwanzaa mm -hmm. is the one who brought Kenpo in uh, Kenya. Uh, and I'll say in Africa because there was no Kenpo any, anywhere mm -hmm. in, in Africa. When he brought it, he tried to, you know, he tried to teach mm -hmm. those who would, uh, you know, mm -hmm. accept the art. Mm -hmm. Those who found, uh, realized that maybe this thing has something that have not experienced in other art. Mm -hmm. There were those who went, came for the trials. Mm -hmm. I want to try, and mm -hmm. they left. Mm -hmm. There are those who stick to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of uh, those coaches, they've taught several of us. And... Uh, we also, we've again, you know, spread mm -hmm. the tendrils of mm -hmm. Kenpo mm -hmm. to ensure that Kenpo is mm -hmm. penetrating to the gra mm -hmm. grassroots. 
Kenpo nowadays, if you say Kenpo mm -hmm. in Kenya, mm -hmm. even Mashinani, mm -hmm. they'll ask you, those guys who wear black geese, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. initially the only gi which was known was mm -hmm. a white gi. Yeah, yes. yeah, a white gi, mm -hmm. that's a karate uniform. And uh, Kenpo came as a unique thing. They started uh, with uh, black gi. Mm -hmm. we've, we've spread it all over, mm -hmm. though in different federations, mm -hmm. because of uh, uh, syllabus are different. Mm -hmm. Uh, if to name but just a few, mm -hmm. my federation is uh, American Kenpo Jiu Jitsu. Mm -hmm. uh, there is one of us, uh, one of my friends who was supposed to be with me today, uh, I think he's caught somewhere, is uh, mm -hmm. representing uh, Kenpo Legacy Paka. Mm -hmm. I have another one who is representing Tiger mm -hmm. Academy, mm -hmm. that is a Chinese Kenpo. Mm -hmm. Then we have the African Kenpo. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as uh, one of the Kenpo Federation. Mm -hmm. We have Mantis Kenpo, mm -hmm. we have Leo, we have uh, Yehu. Mm -hmm. Yes, those are just to mention yeah. but a few. Yes, and maybe as we wind up, just uh, in a few seconds, what are the forthcoming championships? It, just briefly, forthcoming uh, championships that um, the Kenpo Karate and Ama students are looking forward to this year. Uh, this year we are we were looking forward to to host an international championship that is in uh, between uh, uh, July mm -hmm. August mm -hmm. uh, July August mm -hmm. September mm -hmm. uh, where we we will love all Kenpois mm -hmm. uh, to come join and mm -hmm. other arts mm -hmm. because what I experienced in uh, South Africa mm -hmm. was the rules that all arts can compete mm -hmm. you know in a in a fair mm -hmm. and level manner. Mm -hmm. So we are looking also to host, mm -hmm. to replicate mm -hmm. what we saw our, mm -hmm. com, com, you know, our South African compatriots mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. in their country, bringing the unison of mm -hmm. uh, you know, martial arts. Okay. Yes. That's uh, Alex Onyango, the Kenpo Karate coach. I believe that we'll have more of him in uh, subsequent Touchline shows. Thank you so much, Alex, for making time and gracing Touchline this afternoon. Yes, and of course we take a break, we'll be back on the Touchline.